In this video, we'll introduce and define projectile motion, then explore two-dimensional projectile motion in detail. We'll examine the characteristics of the trajectory of two-dimensional projectiles, and we'll then apply this theory to two examples, solving for the projectile's horizontal displacement and for the projectile's vertical displacement in an applied problem. A projectile is an object that is propelled into the air and is acted upon only by the force of gravity during its flight. Some projectiles move in two dimensions, vertically and horizontally, simultaneously. These projectiles may be propelled horizontally or propelled at an angle. In these scenarios, the projectile accelerates downward while moving horizontally at a constant speed. Regardless of the magnitude or direction of their initial velocity, all projectiles will accelerate downward at the same rate, 9.8 meters per second squared, or the acceleration of freefall near the Earth's surface, provided there is no air resistance acting on the projectile. We'll begin by exploring the trajectory of two-dimensional projectile motion. Two-dimensional projectiles have both vertical and horizontal motion simultaneously. As with one-dimensional projectile motion, two-dimensional projectiles have symmetrical trajectories. This means that at equal heights, the magnitude of the projectile's velocity will be the same, and its angle from horizontal will be the same. Now, because these projectiles have both horizontal and vertical motion simultaneously, we can break the projectile's velocity into its components. We can see the horizontal velocity remains constant throughout the projectile's flight. The projectile's vertical velocity does not remain constant. It decreases as the projectile moves upward and increases as the projectile falls downward because the projectile accelerates in this direction due to the force of gravity acting on it. As with one-dimensional projectiles, the instantaneous vertical velocity of a two-dimensional projectile is zero at its highest point. So how do we break the projectile's velocity into its components? Provided we know the velocity and the angle, we can find the horizontal velocity using v cosine theta and the vertical velocity using v sine theta. Now why do we need to break the velocity into components at all? Because the projectile accelerates and therefore changes velocity in only one direction, we can only apply the acceleration of freefall to the velocity in the vertical direction. Therefore, the instantaneous velocity cannot be used for calculations. The motion of a two-dimensional projectile and a one-dimensional projectile is identical in the vertical direction. If we consider a projectile that is dropped and a projectile that is thrown horizontally, we can see that the projectile's vertical velocity and displacement is identical for both projectiles at the same times. The horizontal component of the two-dimensional projectile's motion does not affect the vertical component of its motion. The vertical and horizontal motion are in fact completely independent. Vertically, the projectile accelerates downward due to the Earth's gravitational force. If we examine a graph of vertical displacement as a function of time for this projectile, we see this downward acceleration with the graph getting steeper over time. Horizontally, the projectile maintains a constant velocity provided there is no air resistance acting on it. We will only quantitatively consider projectile motion in which there is no air resistance present. The only force acting on the projectile is the force of gravity, so there is no net force in the horizontal direction and the projectile does not accelerate in the horizontal direction. Let's consider an example of a symmetrical two-dimensional projectile. A football is kicked at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal with a velocity of 20 meters per second. The ball travels through the air without air resistance. What horizontal distance does the football travel before it lands on the ground? We'll begin with a labeled diagram. We know the initial velocity, the angle, and the acceleration. Because the initial velocity is at an angle, we must break it into vertical and horizontal components prior to completing calculations. The horizontal component of the initial velocity is equal to 20 meters per second multiplied by the cosine of 30 degrees, or 17.3 meters per second. The vertical component of the projectile's velocity is equal to 20 meters per second multiplied by the sine of 30 degrees, or 10 meters per second. With two-dimensional projectiles, we will need to consider both directions of motion separately. This means that these problems will often have at least two steps. Time in the air will be an incredibly important quantity for two-dimensional projectiles. This is determined by the vertical velocity. And why is this? 
Well, imagine a ball is thrown horizontally in the absence of gravity. The ball would continue moving through the air forever. The force of gravity accelerating the ball downward causes it to fall toward the earth, limiting its time in the air. Vertically, we can solve for time in the air using the equation final velocity equals initial velocity plus the product of acceleration and time. We'll use the subscript y here to mean any motion in the vertical direction. You may be thinking we don't know the final velocity in the vertical direction, but we do. The projectile's motion is symmetrical, so the final velocity will be the same magnitude as the initial velocity, but in the opposite direction. Rearranging and substituting our values tells us the ball is in the air for 2.04 seconds. Projectile problems often have more than one viable approach to problem solving. Due to the symmetry of the projectile's trajectory, we could also consider the displacement in the vertical direction to solve for time. Because the projectile's initial and final position in the vertical direction are the same, its displacement is zero. We could use the formula s equals ut plus one half at squared and solve for time. We would still get the same answer, 2.04 seconds. Now the reason time is such an important quantity is it is the only quantity that is common to both vertical and horizontal motion of the projectile. If the projectile is in the air for 2.04 seconds in the vertical direction, it is also in the air for 2.04 seconds in the horizontal direction. Now we can shift our focus to the horizontal direction of motion. Since we want to find the horizontal distance, we'll select a formula that contains displacement, time, and velocity. Because the projectile does not accelerate in the horizontal direction, we can cancel the acceleration containing term from the formula. For uniform motion, the displacement is equal to the product of velocity and time. We'll use the subscript x here to denote motion in the horizontal direction. We will use the horizontal velocity we calculated from the initial velocity and the time we calculated from the vertical motion. We can see that the ball's horizontal displacement is 35 meters. Let's consider another example, this time an example that is more applied, but is similar to questions you may encounter on an IB exam. A cat jumps horizontally from a tree branch 4.5 meters above the ground with a velocity of 7 meters per second. A 2.0 meter tall fence is located 3.0 meters from the tree. We must determine if the cat will make it over the fence during his jump. We'll start with a label diagram. We have a lot of information, so we'll need to determine what we're being asked to best determine how to solve this problem. We can frame the problem in one of two ways. First, we could consider if the cat will travel at least 3.0 meters horizontally in the time it falls 2.5 meters vertically, with 2.5 meters being the change in height between the tree branch and the top of the fence. If the cat travels more than 3.0 meters in this time, it will make it over the fence. If the cat travels less than 3.0 meters in this time, it will not make it over the fence. We could also consider if the cat will fall less than 2.5 meters vertically in the time it takes to travel 3.0 meters horizontally. If the cat falls less than 2.5 meters in this time, it will make it over the fence. If the cat falls more than 2.5 meters in this time, it will not make it over the fence. Either of these approaches will yield an answer. We're going to use the second framing to solve this problem. As with our previous example, we'll start with solving for time. We'll find the time it will take the cat to travel 3.0 meters horizontally. We know the cat's horizontal displacement and horizontal velocity. In the horizontal direction, the cat does not accelerate. Therefore, we can simplify a uniform acceleration equation, s equals ut plus 1 half at squared, by canceling the acceleration containing term. This yields the formula displacement is equal to the product of velocity and time. We can rearrange for time, substitute our known values, and solve. The cat will travel the 3.0 meters needed to reach the fence in 0.429 seconds. Now we can determine how far the cat will fall vertically in 0.429 seconds. The cat does not have an initial vertical velocity, but does accelerate downward due to gravity as it falls. The cat's vertical displacement will equal the product of initial velocity and time plus one half the product of acceleration and time squared. 
We can cancel the initial velocity containing term, substitute our values, and solve. In 0.429 seconds, the cat falls 0.9 meters. We said earlier that the cat would make it over the fence provided it falls less than 2.5 meters in the time it takes to jump 3.0 meters horizontally. The cat falls only 0.9 meters in this time, so it does make it over the fence. This is just one approach to solving this problem. Several other approaches would also work and would yield the correct answer. The key to projectile motion problems, especially in two dimensions, is to develop your approach based on your understanding of the projectile's trajectory and to follow through using time as a connection between the two directions of motion. This wraps up our introduction to projectile motion in two dimensions. In two dimensions, projectiles have independent vertical and horizontal motion. Time is the only quantity that is common to both directions of motion. Vertically, the projectile accelerates downward due to the Earth's gravitational force. We can use our formulas for uniform acceleration to solve problems involving the vertical motion of a two-dimensional projectile. Horizontally, the projectile maintains a constant velocity throughout its flight. We can use a formula for uniform motion to solve problems involving horizontal motion of two-dimensional projectiles.